Now, what are our revenue estimates and tax proposals? I'm sure if you were feeling sleepy, you'll be awake now. <laughs> I turn now, Mr. Speaker, to the revenue estimates and tax proposals. The underlying principles are that the tax system should be fair, efficient, trans transparent, and certain, and where possible, uncomplicated. Tax revenue recovered during 2010, 11, 2012, and 11 and 12, following a decline in 2009 and 10 during the global recession. That means SARS is beginning to do its job well again. Although tax revenue is slightly lower than our estimate in February last year, the revised estimate for 2011 12 of 739 billion rands is 10 billion rands higher than projected in last year's MTBPS. So what are this, this year's tax proposals? I'll quickly summarize them for you. Personal income tax relief, much of which goes to the lower end, that is people who earn less than 200,000 rands, of 9.5 billion rands is proposed, which takes account of inflation and provides a modest real tax relief. The tax treatment of medical expenses undergoes a change from the 1st of March 2012 and we have a tax credit system for contributions to medical schemes, which will be introduced at a rate of 230 rands a month for the first two beneficiaries and 154 uh, rands each for additional beneficiaries. Now what this means essentially is that where medical deductions were dependent upon whether you earned at a low level or higher level and therefore you got a higher discount if you like, now there's equity within the system and everybody will be getting the same tax credit. Taxpayers 65 years and older and people with disabilities will be included in the second phase of this reform, which will be implemented in 2014. These reforms will significantly improve the fairness of the personal income tax system. In respect of retirement fund and savings, reform of the tax treatment of contributions to retirement funds is also envisaged to take effect in 2014. To encourage voluntary savings, which is a key priority for South Africa, Consideration has been given to the introduction of tax-exempt short and medium-term savings products. That's a new set of products. The proposal is that individuals should be permitted to save up to 30,000 rands a year with a lifetime limit of 500,000 rands in registered savings or investment products that would be free of tax of, on interest that is earned, dividends or capital gains. We believe that there must be more such products to attract all uh, income groups in South Africa uh, to increase their savings. The current tax-free interest income thresholds will be reviewed and possibly phased out uh, as part of this overall reform. Full details of these proposals are in the budget review. In respect of dividends tax, the secondary tax on companies, which is the tax that we have currently, will be terminated on the 31st of March 2012 and a withholding tax on dividends will be implemented on the 1st of April 2012. This has been in the pipeline for three years now. This will align South Africa's tax treatment of dividends with that in most other countries. Pension funds will benefit from this transition as they will receive dividends tax free. The dividends tax will be introduced at 15% as opposed to the original 10% we thought. There's a change in capital gains tax. When capital gains tax was introduced by Minister Manuel in October 2001, this was an important step in broadening the tax base of South Africa. In order to reduce the scope for tax arbitrage and broaden the tax base further, the CGT inclusion rate for individuals and special trusts will be increased with effect from the 1st of March 2012 from 25% to a modest 33.3%. And for companies and other trusts from 50% to an equally modest 66.6%. Just uh, before we have too much of whistling, these rates in equivalent countries are 100%, right? So we are still uh, modest, and we need to think carefully before we do more whistling. <laughs> to, to mitigate the impact on middle income earners, there's a lot of details in the budget review. The various exclusion thresholds are increased so that the impact is minimized. Relief for small businesses, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to advise that there will be further tax relief for small businesses and micro-enterprises. 
The tax-free threshold for small business corporations is increased to 60, excuse me, 63,556, and the 10% rate of tax is reduced to 7%, and the threshold up to which this rate applies is increased to 350,000. For taxable income above 350,000, the normal 28% corporate rate applies. With effect from next month, qualifying micro-businesses, that is micro-businesses that have a, a turnover of less than 1 million rands, these, these micro-enterprises will be able to pay turnover tax, VAT, and employees tax only twice a year. This means that the number of returns and payments a year will be reduced from about 18 to just two. And that's a major advance, I think. <laughs> Several measures are set out in the budget review to improve the corporate tax environment. Mr. Speaker, amongst them are the further steps to be taken to limit excessive debt financing. What happens here is that companies get into a lot of debt and then the state is unable to tax the, uh, the interest that is, uh, or it allows the interest to be deductible, and this is then manipulated to, to ensure that the owners of the company benefit, but you, the taxpayer, suffers at the end of the day. Amendments to the mark-to-market -market taxation of foreign currency and other financial instruments will be phased in. The governance and tax treatment of property loan stock entities will be aligned with the present treatment of regulated property unit trusts. Tax relief is proposed for housing developers and employers who provide housing below 300,000 rands a year, uh, a unit, I beg your pardon. And this again is to feed in with the, what the President announced in terms of the gap market. The Minister of Trade and Industry has published draft legislation to provide for the creation of special economic zones. Tax relief is under consideration for businesses that invest in these zones, including a reduction in the corporate income tax rate and support for employment and training expenses. In respect of carbon tax, a revised policy paper on a carbon tax will be published this year for a second round of public comment and consultation. As set out in the Climate Change Response White Paper, approved by Cabinet in 2011, the need to price carbon emissions and the phasing in of a tax instrument for this purpose are accepted. The, the levy on electricity generated from non-renewable sources will be increased by one cent, without, one cent per kilowatt hour without any major impact on consumers as from 1 July 2012 and will replace the current funding mechanism for energy efficiency initiatives such as the solar water geyser program. And as a result, there should be little overall impact, as I've said, on electricity tariffs. Fuel levies, the general fuel levy on petrol and diesel will be increased by 20 cents with effect from 4 April 2012. And the road accident fund will increase by 8 cents to 88 cents per litre. In respect of the square kilometre array project, members of the House will know that under the guidance of Ministers, uh, Minister of Science and Technology, South Africa is bidding to host the square kilometre array, the SKA an international collaboration to build the world's largest radio telescope. I am happy to confirm that the project will qualify for VAT relief, which will surely give Minister Pando the winning edge, we hope, in this contest. I don't know how many of you are gamblers, but uh, following the 2011 budget proposal on gambling, it is proposed that a national tax based on gross gambling revenue should be introduced effective from 1 April 2013 as an additional 1% levy on a uniform provincial gambling tax base. A similar base will be used to tax the national lottery. Now your favorite item. Excise duties on tobacco and alcohol. <laughs> One of the tips, uh, Mr. Speaker, we received was from Mr. D. Nyker, who says, raise the tax on alcohol and cigarettes so that people will stop drinking and smoking too much. I'm sure you agree that this is good advice. So we've taken the advice. The increases in duties on tobacco products will be between 5 and 8% this year. In respect of beer and spirits, the one you drink, 
an, an, an increased benchmark tax burden is proposed to be phased in over two years. The excise on spirits will increase by 20% to 36 rands for a 750 ml bottle this year. Order, order. Now for the beer drinkers. The tax on beer goes up by 10% to one run and one set cent for a 340 ml can, and wine will contribute 8% more to the fiscus. A tax, uh, Minister Motsualeri says he's very happy. As far as a, a tax on financial transaction is concerned, we do have one in South Africa, which is on securities transfers at a rate of 0.25%. It is proposed that the current exemption for brokers should be abolished. Transactions for the broker's benefit will be taxed at a lower rate, and the inclusion of financial derivatives in the base of the securities transfer tax is also under consideration. Ad valorem excises, with effect from October this year, an ad valorem excise duty at a rate of 7% will apply to small aeroplanes and helicopters with a mass below 5,000 kilograms, a duty of 10% will apply to motor boats and sailboats longer than 10 meters. Obviously, you guys don't own boats. 